Hello and welcome to Otten Math. We have a really exciting edition of Otten Math. We're going to go through some practice problems. It's going to be a little bit on the longer side for you, so you probably want to put aside at least 15 minutes or so for us to get through these problems. I have two problems, I believe, and there are multiple sections or portions of the first problem with a lot of detailed explanation, but really fun problems to work out. All right, so let's take the first problem. <clears throat> Number 17, and again, there I believe there are eight or nine different components to this first problem. We're going to give the most descriptive name to the figure formed by connecting consecutive midpoints of each of the following figures. So the first one is going to be a rhombus, right? So <clears throat> I have, let's just say that my rhombus is E, F, G, H, <clears throat> and I want to figure out what the uh, figure is that's formed that figure A, B, C, D, some type of figure. All right, so this is what we're going to do. By the midline theorem, we're going to draw uh, two diagonals, and they're going to be in red, so HF and EG. HF and EG are my two diagonals, and as a result of drawing this, I know that AB is congruent. So AB, and I've got a lot of colors going on here. Let's see if we can do this in a different color. Uh, let's do it in purple. So I know that AB is going to be congruent to DC because by the midline theorem, <clears throat> the uh, segment that joins the midpoints of the triangle EHF is going to be half of HF. So I have DC and AB that are congruent by the midline theorem. I also have BC and AD that are congruent, again, by the midline theorem. And in this case, uh, my... Uh, base of the triangle is going to be EG. So now I have a parallelogram in A, B, C, uh, and D. Right now I draw these green lines B, D, and A, C. And I see that B, D is congruent with F, G, and also with E, H. And A, C is congruent as well with <clears throat> E, F, and H, G. And I know that this is a rhombus, so all sides are congruent. So now AC and DB are also congruent. Now, if I have a parallelogram where the diagonals are congruent, then the figure is a rectangle. So the answer to this question is that the uh, most descriptive name to the figure formed by connecting the consecutive midpoints of a rhombus is going to be a rectangle. All right, that's one down. we got several more to go. Okay, next figure is going to be a kite. Give the most descriptive name to the figure formed by connecting consecutive midpoints of a kite. We go ahead and connect those segments. And again, we have the same type of proof that we did with rhombus by the midline theorem. Uh, again, we draw our diagonals AE and CG. By the midline theorem, BD and EF are congruent, or I'm sorry, BD and HF are congruent. And then we also know that BH and DF are congruent, so we have two pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral that are congruent, so we have a parallelogram. Then we can see that BF is congruent with HD, and because those two diagonals are congruent, uh, the figure again is a rectangle. Next figure is a square. Give the most descriptive name to the figure that uh, is formed by connecting midpoints of each of the following figures, and again, this is a square. So let's mark up the diagram. All right, we marked up the midpoints, we labeled the diagram, and let's see what we have. Okay, well, triangles ABC, CDE, AHG, and EFG are all congruent by side angle side. So in a square, I know that all of the angles, interior angles of the square are going to be right angles. So by side angle side, CB, Angle B and BA are congruent to AH, angle H, HG, and etc. So <clears throat> I know that AC, CE, EG, and AG, all the sides of the figure formed by connecting the midpoints, are going to be congruent. All right? Because they're all congruent, I can say that the figure here is going to be at least a rhombus. Now, if I join uh, the midpoints here, AE and CG, I can see that these are also congruent. 
So this figure is both a rectangle and a rhombus, which means that it is a square. So remember, in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. I have a rhombus with congruent diagonals, which means that I have a both a rhombus and a rectangle. Uh, and by definition, a square is both a rectangle and a rhombus. All right, so uh, the most descriptive name here is going to be a square. Next is a rectangle. I'm going to join the midpoints of the sides of a rectangle. And I can see now that triangles MNO, uh, P or QPO, QRS, and MLS are all going to be congruent by side angle side for the same reasons that we had the triangles and the square congruent. So I have that right angle, side, angle, side. Uh, by And that's again by side, angle, side. So now I have MO. So these are the segments that join the midpoints. MO, OQ, QS, and MS are all going to be congruent by CPCTC. So I have a parallelogram which ends up being a rhombus. I have at least two consecutive sides of that parallelogram that are congruent. Uh, the most descriptive figure for the figure that is resulting from connecting the midpoints of a rectangle is a rhombus. Okay, next figure is a parallelogram. And in this case, all right, I have marked up the diagram again. I can say that D, E, E, F, G, H, uh, I'm sorry, D, E, and E, F are congruent. H, I, and I, B are congruent. So all four of those segments are congruent because I know opposite sides are congruent. D, C, C, B, F, G, and G, H are all congruent because they are half of congruent sides that are congruent. And I'm gonna to go to my midline theorem again. And by the midline theorem, I see that CG, I'm sorry, CE is congruent to IG, right? Because BF as the midline is going to be the base. CE is half of BF. IG is half of BF. And if they're both half of, a, uh, of one value, then they're going to be the same value. So CE and GI are congruent. And by the same midline theorem, I can say that EG is congruent with CI. So DH is the base of the triangle. CI is half of DH, and EG is half of the base. So now I have a parallelogram. I have opposite sides of the parallelogram, which are congruent. Uh, my most descriptive name is a parallelogram. Next one, I have a quadrilateral. And again, I join the midpoints of the quadrilateral, and I think you can see by now where we're going with this. Again, I use the midline theorem. Midline theorem is going to say that B, D, and H, F are congruent. They're half of A, E. And then we'll do this one in green. D, F, and B, H are congruent. They're half of C, G. So the most descriptive name for this figure, B, D, F, H, is going to be a parallelogram. I think we have, I believe, just one more to go. All right, now I have an isosceles trapezoid. This is my last figure. You can see I've marked it up correctly. J, H, and L, N are congruent. Uh, J, L is parallel to H, N. I connect the midpoints. And again, I'm going to use the midline theorem. But before I do that, <clears throat> I've also marked up that J, H, N is congruent to L, N, H. In the isosceles triangle, the uh, upper and lower base angles are going to be congruent. So let's first say that triangles J, K, I... So JKI and LKM are going to be congruent by side angle side. So the upper base angle is congruent, JK congruent to KL, JI congruent to LM. These two triangles are going to be congruent. That means that uh, IK is congruent to KM by CPCTC. Now I have triangles MNO, and let's do this in red here, MNO and IHO that are congruent, again, by side, angle, side. So I know that IO and MO are congruent by CPCTC. Well, I can say that MO is congruent, MO is congruent to IK by the midline theorem, right? So now I have my midline here. MO is congruent to IK because IK is half of HL and MO is half of HL. So now IK and MO are also congruent. And if IK and MO are congruent, IO is also congruent to IK 
and excuse me and km is also going to be congruent as well so I have four sides now that are congruent uh, I have a, a quadrilateral if I have four sides congruent it is a parallelogram all right that was a lot of information uh, I believe I just have one more problem to go, so let's talk about that. We're going to move on. Now, the diagram is shown, and I want to prove that ABCD is a rectangle. All right, so let's go through the proof for this. Um, I have <clears throat> AD, which is parallel to BC, and why is that? Diagram is shown. I have these two angles, ADF and CBF, that are congruent. So if alternate interior angles are congruent, then I have parallel sides. AD and BC are parallel to each other. I know that AFD is congruent to angle BFC. Uh, so angle AFD is congruent to angle BFC because vertical angles are congruent. And let's mark this in green here. So AFD and BFC are congruent. Uh, vertical angles are congruent. Now I know that uh, angle... BCF and angle FAD, so BCF, and let's do that in black, BCF and DAC, or we can say DAF, are congruent uh, by the no choice theorem. All right, now I'm going to say the triangle AFD, so this triangle here, is congruent to BFC by angle side angle. I have angle in black. Blue line, angle green, black, blue line, angle green. <clears throat> so these two triangles, AFD and CFB, are congruent by angle side angle. Now I can say that AD is congruent to BC by CPCTC. Now I can say that ABCD is a parallelogram because if I have opposite sides which are both congruent and parallel, they prove uh, that it's a parallelogram. Now I can say that AC is going to be congruent to DB. AC is congruent to DB because the diagonals, excuse me, I can say, and I think I skipped a step in this proof. I can say that AC is congruent to DB by addition, but first what I need to say is that, <clears throat> and I skipped over this in the proof, I'm gonna say that uh, FB is congruent to DF, right, as part of CPCTC and proving these two triangles congruent. FB is congruent to DF. So by addition, I can say that AC is congruent to DB. Now ABCD then is a rectangle because I have a parallelogram with congruent diagonals.